Welcome to the next unit. This unit is going to be about gentleness. So the idea of a man being a gentleman comes from this, being gentle to each other. Can we be, can we, can we be more gentle to each other? Let's see. So Philippians 4, 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So gentleness means being kind to one another. Gentleness, 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 being kind to one another. Gentleness. Colossians 3.12. Put on, therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, a heart of compassion, kindness, lowliness, humility, and perseverance. So this word perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. This is keep going even when it is difficult. Perseverance. Like I think that my picture is covering up part of the definition, but we're gonna persevere. We're gonna keep going even though it's difficult to read. Perseverance. Proverbs 15.1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Harsh, 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 harsh. Mean or cruel, being bad to each other. Harsh word, mean or cruel words, harsh. But a harsh word stirs up anger, but a mean or cruel word stirs up anger, harsh. So now we have this word deceit, presenting something false as true, deceit, deceit. Deceit. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but deceit in it crushes the spirit. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Colossians 4, 5. By the way, this beautiful building I think is the fortress in Naju, if I'm not mistaken. Just a beautiful building. So now we have redeeming, 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 saving from error. So if you redeem the time, you redeem it from used in error. Redeeming. So walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. Saving from using the time in error. Redeeming. Use the time correctly. Don't waste it. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Verse 6. Grace. Grace, grace, grace. This is politeness and goodwill. Even when people don't deserve it, you're polite to them. You answer them nicely. You show them goodwill. You know, I want good things for you. Even again, when they don't deserve it. This is grace. Sometimes it's known as unmerited favor. You didn't deserve it, but you get it anyway. That's the way we should have our speech, with politeness, wanting good for people. Grace, let your speech always be with politeness and goodwill, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Grace, verse 18. You shall not take vengeance, 
nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Well, I'm not Yahweh, but the passage says that. So we have this word vengeance, 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 vengeance. This is where you want to hurt people who have wronged you. If you want to take vengeance on someone, you want to hurt them. They've done something bad to you, so you want to do something bad to them. That's the idea of vengeance. A lot of sometimes police dramas have this word in it, taking vengeance. Grudge. So it says, bear any grudge. A grudge is grudge, grudge, grudge. A long-term feeling of anger or resentment over a past hurt. So a grudge, I keep it inside of me. Don't let it go, right? Anger, anger. I resent you. I don't like you for what's happened. Holding a grudge. That's not healthy. Let it go, right? The idea is just let it go. Grudge. All right, so we have the words vengeance and grudge. You shall not hurt people who have wronged you, nor bear any long-term feeling of anger or resentment over a past hurt against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Always like that, love your neighbor as yourself. Romans 14.10. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14.10. By the way, on a side note, I just love these Korean roofs, right? This has two of those in this picture. I love Korean architecture, the buildings here. I find just beautiful, very distinctive roofs. So I hope you're enjoying them too. All these pictures are my own pictures. As I've traveled around Korea, I love photography, take a lot of pictures. I hope you enjoy them. So we have this word despise, 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 despise. This is strong hatred. You really hate somebody or something. Despise. Or you again, why do you despise your brother? Or you again, why do you strongly hate your brother? despise. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Brothers, even if a man is caught in some fault, you who are spiritual must restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself so that you also aren't tempted. So caught in some fault, we might use the word sin, right? some thing that they're doing wrong, right? Um, so any kind of fault. So now we have this word restore, 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 restore. So you're bringing them back to the right place, right? So uh, my mother actually used to restore furniture. Somebody spilled paint. Usually these are antiques, 200 year old furniture. So she'd restore it, take off all the paint, you know, from 10 years ago. And if it's worn out a little bit, she might fix it up. And so she's restoring it, bringing it back to the right place. 
the way it looked 200 years ago. The same thing here. Some man is going off the path, doing some fault, having some sin. Bring him back to the right place. Stop what you're doing. Start doing right. This is the idea of restore. 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 You who are spiritual must restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. You who are spiritual must bring back to the right place such a one in a spirit of gentleness. So remember, gentleness means to be kind to each other. Don't be harsh, as we learn. Don't be mean. Do it kindly. Bring him back to the right place, but do it kindly. Restore. Now, tempted, tempted, tempted. So tempted means you want to do something that is wrong. So you're tempted to do it. Haven't done it yet. You just want to do it. Tempted. So now we can use these words restore and tempted. You who are spiritual must bring back to the right place such a one in a spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself so that you also aren't wanting to do something that is wrong. So especially the fault that this man was caught in. You don't want to do what they were doing. Restore and tempt it. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Burdens, 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 burdens. Anything we have to deal with, trouble, sickness, physical burdens, etc. So the idea of burdens, and also fulfill, fulfill, fulfill. It means to do a task or a duty. Do your duty, right? Like if you're in the military, do your duty. Do what your commanding officers ask you to do. Doing your duty. Burdens and fulfill. Bear one another's troubles. And so do your duty to the law of Christ. Burdens and fulfill. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yoke. So yoke, yoke, yoke. This is a harness connecting two animals to do work. Like if you look up here in the top right, you see two ox and you've got these pieces of wood. Now in real life, those pieces of wood would be connected to each other, but these aren't actually connected, but they would be connected. So now the two can pull as one animal. So a yoke connecting two animals to do work together as one. Two ox, two pieces of wood should be connected. Now they can do some work. Yoke. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. The overseer therefore must be without reproach. The husband of one wife, temperate, sensible, modest, hospitable, good at teaching. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. So we have this word overseer. This is just the boss or supervisor, right? 
The overseer is the boss. Overseer, 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 the boss. So this word reproach, 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 reproach. This means disappointment or disapproval. So the overseer, the boss, you're not disappointed with him or disapproving of him. So the idea is, can you believe what the boss did, right? He's caught in some you know, illegal, immoral action. So we're disappointed in him or her. We're disapproving of him or her. Reproach, temperate. This word temperate is temperate, temperate, temperate. So you have self-restraint or moderation, right? So everything in moderation. So don't overeat, over drink, over sleep, right? You restrain yourself from doing these things and do things in moderation, not too much, not too little, temperate. Now, this word sensible, 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 sensible. So this is wisdom, being wise in practical matters. Sometimes we call this horse sense, right? Common sense. That's the idea here, right? You're practical, right? You do things in, uh, with practicality in mind, sensible. So you might be good with money. You might be good with organization. You might be good with how to set up things. So, you know, a group of people can use them wisely. This is the idea of sensible. Being good with things that are practical. We actually need them to have a meeting or, you know, things like that. So sensible. So putting this together, we have uh, overseer, we have reproach, we have sensible, and we have temperate. The boss, therefore, must be without disappointment or disapproval. The husband of one wife, having self-restraint or moderation, wise in practical matters, modest, hospitable, good at teaching. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. The Lord's servant must not quarrel, but must be gentle toward all able to teach, patient. So first of all, we have this word quarrel, 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 arguing and fighting, right? So people should not quarrel, not argue and fight all the time, quarrel. So this is the end of this unit on gentleness. So again, a, a man is supposed to be a gentleman, full of gentleness, kindness to each other. In this unit, used a lot of examples like don't be harsh, right? Be sensible, uh, you know, and a number of other ways to describe gentle. So can we be more gentle with each other? Right? Is this the right way to be gentle with each other? You decide. Gentleness. Personally, I'd like to be a gentleman. I'd like to be gentle as much as I can to people. So have a great day, and I'll see you in the next unit. Bye.